Steven. Mm -hmm. Hi, Steven. Hi. You let us know when you're ready. And Devlin, you're still sharing, just in case you want to. I just I will share my screen just for us. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you can see something, please let me know. Yes, we can see something. It says Perfect. dong here. Yeah. Um, I don't know if everybody knows what it means, but dong is the <laughs> sound of a bell to make a deep, <laughs> resonant, deep or resonant sound or to find somebody, right? It has maybe another meanings, but they are not official. So we will stick with these two minutes. Did you Google that right now? Mm -hmm. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, didn't know well, that. Um, did you know that uh, probably Logon probably Logon will know this. Dong is also a Chinese name. That means uh, to supervise. So basically it means like a, yeah. a manager or a supervisor. Ah. So usually somebody in Chinese would call himself, I'm the Dong. Okay, I was totally intentionally. I was exactly yes. meant like that. Okay. <laughs> okay, we can we can <laughs> discuss that later <laughs> on. But... So uh, okay. again, this is our last speech of the evening. And later on, you are welcome. So once Stephen finishes, we will stop the live streaming. And then we can stay and have the favorite drink of our choice, which can be tea or beer or, or wine or whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. So Stephen? Mm -hmm. I'm ready when you are. You will deliver us a dong, things you can do now with Git. Exactly. Stephen Giselle, the stage is yours. Perfect. OK. Um, Exactly, I want to show some tricks with Git, basically three, um, if the times allow, um, because it's only 15 minutes. I have to oversimplify some things. Um, I can maybe later on a, on a different talk, I can go much more in detail. So please take everything with a, a grain of salt. Also, please be aware that all of the stuff I will show, you can do differently. Um, there are other approaches. I just want to show some examples. So I want to start first with git bisect. This is a pretty neat way to find a box in your code or in your code base. Um, this is most, li most likely used if you have um, no clue where the bug lies. Of course, if you know the, the source file, they just make a git blame and then you go to your coworker and slap him. But if you can't do that, then you can use git bisect. And how does it work? Yep, basically you have a range of commits. And you know, for example, that your current head, for example, your develop branch um, is broken, there is a bug, and you know, for example, the last um, master or the last tech which you deployed to the production was stable and there was no bug. So what you do with git bisect is you give them a range. Um, you say to git, please, I wanna go from this to that, so from the stable one to the broken one. And as the name bisect indicates, it's a binary search. So you at most go through log n of those entries. And what we do is, I try to make this with the colors. You, basically you go like in a binary search, you go in the middle and then you say, if is this commit broken, yes or no. If it's, uh, for example, not broken, it's also good. It goes also in the middle of those until you found the bug in question. Um, Presentation and slides are nice, but I think it's way cooler if we just go to the console and we do this directly in a code base. Let's assume you have this nice little program and you want to run this program and this basically multiplies two values. If it does that, oh, yeah, that is also true. Uh, for example, you enter 10. And 10 times 2 is obviously not 5. And you literally have no clue where the bug is coming from. So what you can do is you can say git bisect start. So you initiate the process. Um, we know that our current head is bad. This is the command to say that here there lies a bug. So I can say it's bad. And now I have to say which commit is good, just to say what is the range of my inspection. And I know, for example, my initial commit here, this one is good because there was basically um, no code involved. And I can say now this one is good. Just take the hash. And now Git says also I have two versions left to check. This is roughly two steps. And as you can see, this is the pointer where I'm ran, uh, where my head uh, or where my branches uh, 
pointing to. You can see it also here. And you can make it basically very explorative. You can just say, OK, let's run the program again, like until we find the bug. So what I do now is I run the program again. I cook 10 times 2. That makes 20. This seems very legit. So what I do now is I say again to Git, hey, my commit looks pretty straightforward. And now I said this one is good. I said this one is good. So all of those have to be good as well. So what Git has to check now is this one, this one, and this one. They are all candidates where the bug was introduced. So now I say good. And where he jumps to is obviously here, binary search. And uh, we can check it basically again. Here's some code. And then we see, does it work, yes or no? No, it does not. So we know this one is also male functioned. So we say this one is a bad one. And now we said this one is a bad one. This one is a, as well as a bad one. We said this one is good. Oh, so there's one candidate left, uh, which we didn't check, which could potentially the first comment where the bug was introduced. Um, now we make it explorative again. And we can say, OK, here, 10 times 2 makes 20. This seems very legit, according to my math. So I say, good. And now what Git does is they say, Ray, we found the commit uh, where the bug was introduced with a nice message where I added performance and, of course, no bugs. And it seems like I didn't. Exactly. This is the first one where you can find bugs. It's, it's a pretty nice one. Makes sense if you don't know where the bug is. Um, if you roundabout have an idea or you know that the explorative testing will take ages, maybe not the best thing to do. The second one I want to uh, show you is a lot of people most likely know the rebase, um, but there's also a, a rebase onto, which basically lets you quickly change your base branch. And let's have the, oh, I can I make the, da, 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 the laser pointer? Maybe this is a bit better if I can find it. Oh. Maybe I can't find it. Uh, shouldn't it be here on the right click? Ah, find options, yeah. Big and let's assume I have this feature branch. Um, this when my base branch is developed. And now I see like, oh, um, that wasn't really my intention. Um, I wanted to have it on release branch because the customer wants to have a feature or a bug fix or whatever the branch is holding. But obviously, you don't want to introduce those two commits or whatever is in between. And you have a few options there. One is obviously cherry picking. Um, could take a while depending on the commits. Or the other option is just you could use the git rebase onto commands. It makes sense if you have a lot of commits on your branch. Otherwise, I would recommend just to do a cherry pick because it's easy. And how it works is basically you want to put this on tip of that of your release branch. So what what Git is doing when you provide all the necessary information is it, it looks oversimplified. Uh, where is the base of your two branches, like your new base and your old base? Uh, because Git itself is um, most likely very linear and has no cycles in it. It's pretty easy to determine where is the common base between two branches. So exactly this is what Git is looking. So you go just back. And then you just put those commits on the tip of your release branch. Um, this also means that potentially you will have merge conflicts. It depends, of course, at the, at the stage of this commit, um, of this space. There, there are um, a lot of factors playing into that. But it's pretty easy to use. And I can show you that um, also pretty quickly on the console. Just give me my timer back. Um, OK, perfect. Um, so um, I have here a very, very simple Git graph. I have a master branch and I have a release branch. So what I can do is I can create my new bucket branch like that. Maybe I should also create it and not only switch to it. So and my current bucket branch is basically on top of master. So let's just create um, some commits just to have a nice coloration. And what you can see here is my fix, my fix two, or my fix three, which are all belonging to the bug fix branch on top of master. But I don't want that. My bug fix branch should go on to release. 
So what I can use is the rebase onto, then I state which is, or I, I say where is my new base branch or the name of the base branch. In my case, it would be release. Where was my old base branch, where I'm coming from? This was obviously master. And then you can say which branch you want to take for this operation. If you on the branch itself, as always, you can omit those information because Git will take your head. And in my case, this is the branch itself. So I can just make that. And then you can pretty easily see that those colors changed, um, not the graph itself, but you can see that now release branch is blue and my comments are on top yeah. of that. Okay. This is pretty handy for me. I need this from time to time, especially when you're not aware that um, some release branch was um, branched from your developer master branch, depending on what you take. And you worked a few days for that and you have a lot of comments. This is the, quite an easy approach to do so. Exactly, coming to the last one, this should be that. Just get Rebase Interactive. I just want to show what, what's the possibility there. There are some nice, pretty tricks involved you can use. And this is also where I mentioned earlier, you can, all of this, you can do differently. But let's take the enum value object we had from the beginning of the session. And now what you can do, Yes, you can just get uh, staged commits. Let's stash them. I don't know what I'm working on. Just better safe than sorry. Maybe include no tracking if they're added, but they're unchanged. Thank you very much. Um, what you can say is interactive. And then you just specify the range. I want to have, for example, from my head, um, the last five comments. And now I have somewhere. Ah, oh, here's a mistake. Sorry. We can also just take uh, the short version, which is minus E. OK. Wrong button, this one. And you have now here a wide variety of options. And the order is always, this is the oldest commit, like fifth commit from um, the current head. And this is my current head. Um, and there are nice, pretty things you can do. You can just say, okay, this is, you can reword this whole thing um, because you don't like the, the message you took. Or a common thing is, let's say you just changed one or you forgot a console log, you forgot the console write line, a debugger launch, whatever. And normally you have to take a new commit and this looks pretty ugly. You can just squash them, like with a squash. Or you can also say a fix up. This is explained here. Fix up is like a squash, but you don't have to provide a new commit message. It makes it pretty easy if you have to make some cleanup or you forgot to remove some usings, it's just some smaller uh, facility tasks. And if you do that, for example, let's say I want to put those together. I want to make a fix up here, close this file handle. And you can see I removed three commits and have one comment new. And this one comment is the last three comments just squashed together. What I want to say before I finish, and I guess I left like one or two minutes time, Jose, please with me is the nature of rebase itself please 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 be very careful because you are changing history and as we might know from back to the future it's not always the best to do so please be aware especially when you're on shared or public branches you can make the, the life of your coworkers very very hard if you do so and they, they are not aware there are fallbacks like pull rebase to mitigate that but I uh, strongly recommend doing that only if you're like with one or two other people on the branch and you can sync quite easily. Please never do this on a master branch, developer branch or public branches where, I don't know, 10 or more people work on that because this will definitely be a pitfall for you. Yeah, that's uh, the three things I wanted to show and uh, thank you very much. And yeah, I guess I'm in time. I'm, oh yeah, 30 minutes. Yes, yes, you are.
Thank you very much, Stephen. That was really interesting session. And I really like how fun it was. <laughs>